Pope Francis has received remarkably good press coverage since he ascended to the office. He has both demonstrated himself to be one of the most progressive popes possibly ever, and has even reached out to the Muslim world in gestures of reconciliation. But the Saudis apparently draw the line on favorable coverage in the August issue of National Geographic. The editors of the magazine have apologized to readers in the country, stating only that the magazine was denied entry for cultural reasons. Previous editions of the magazine translated into Arabic have been released in the country with items censored by the authorities, but since the Pope was the cover of the August issue, they seem to have taken a pass on the whole thing. According to Islamic tradition, the Prophet Muhammad received the revelation of the Quran over a 23-year period, ending in 623 CE. The first fully transcribed copy is suspected to have been created in the year 650. However, errant pages found within another Quran in the University of Birmingham Library's Antiquities have been carbon dated, and scientists say it was printed at least six years earlier than the oldest Quran should have been, and possibly before the Prophet himself had been born. The fragments are believed to have been printed between the years 567 and 644 CE. Should the pages prove to be at the older end, they would predate the Prophet's birth by three years. Should they be from the younger end, they would still predate the historical accounts by six years. There has long been a theory that Muhammad did not actually write the Quran, but that he and his followers simply borrowed, to put it mildly, or plagiarized, to put it honestly, pre-existing Bedouin philosophies, altering them slightly to fit a religious and political agenda. While this new finding does not prove that theory, it clearly adds some credence to it. A Mennonite-owned cabinetry and furniture business that had been operating in Ontario, Canada for at least two decades responded to a decision by its employees to join a union by closing its doors, putting 25 men and women out of the job. In most cases, this would be considered a lockout, and in Ontario, this would be illegal. However, Leon Gingrich, president of Gingrich Woodcraft, asserts that the reason for the closure is that his family's faith precludes them from engaging in negotiations with the union. Said Stephen Boone, a representative of Unifor National, the union in question, All I can tell you is this. This is against the law. You cannot threaten or intimidate workers and take action directly aimed at unionization, and that's what this employer has done here. For his part, Gingrich paid for an ad in a local paper to explain his position, which is rooted in the books of Hebrews and Romans. The statement reads in part, As Christian business owners, our personal beliefs will not allow our conscience the freedom to work with the labor union, as we are required by scripture to live peaceably with all men, and not to use force to gain what we want, or for what is required to succeed. Apparently, honest negotiations for equitable wages would be sinful, but belligerently facing off in court throwing a couple dozen loyal employees under the proverbial bus is religious devotion.